This week on Clown College. I bet they give you a hard time about getting on the plane. (laughs) Why? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? (laughs) But I have never got searched. Oh, randomly selected? Not never one time. Randomly selected? Right. They're like, he's sweating, but we know why. (laughs) They just come on through. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's the same thing. Uh, If I'm honest, Golden Girls. Oh, yeah. Oh. I watched that one with my grandma. Taught me everything I know about sex and relationships. Blanche. Yeah. <laughs> Blanche. Oh, dude. She was a loose one. Blanche, Blanche was, was naughty. And it's, <laughs> it explains why I still have a thing for uh, wealthy older men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Clown College Podcast. We're just a couple open micers trying to make our way through the scene. Where we interview comedians throughout different stages of their comedy career, no matter if they're open micers, headliners, or traveling comedians. I'm here too. Jamie 2.0, I just talk a lot more. Damn it, Brandon. Go sit in the corner. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Clown College Comedy. Hey. Episode 7? Episode 7. Wow. One for every day of the week. One for every day. Mm. Hell yeah. Well, have Brandon, a good how time. you feeling, dude? Man, I'm good. You're looking beautiful man. today. Good. I feel beautiful, man. I've been having a good day. I mean, except for gas. I went to the gas. <laughs> You're telling me. And whoever, whoever's hands was that fucking musty. <laughs> Where the shit stunk that bad. The handle? Needed, the yes, gas pump? Yes, man. It was so bad. The handle, it smelled like shit. You smelled it, it whenever you were just... Yeah, I just lifted it up, and I was like, I gotta go wash my fucking hands now. Must have been Charlie got off from a shift <laughs> at the sewer. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, he needs gas yeah. too, Brandon. Hell Can't yeah. be judging him, dude. Well, somebody's gotta fucking do it. <laughs> True that. Charlie's like Mike Rowe. Huh? He's like Mike Rowe. Dirty yeah, jobs? Yeah, dirty jobs. Yeah, Damn. Yeah. Shout hey, out Charlie, dude. Shout out Charlie. Yep, old Charles. Mm-hmm. Charles Fisherman. <laughs> oh, so what's been new? Oh man, dude, my grandma adopted this dog. She got a dog. <laughs> yeah, and you know she did the right thing. She went to the shelter. We didn't go to a breeder or nothing. But when you get them from the shelter, they're at the shelter for a reason, dude. I'm sorry, <laughs> they're fucked up. The dog's mentally challenged, <laughs> and I just stuttered saying mentally challenged, so I might be as well. You know? It takes one to know one. What do you mean mentally challenged? He got hit by a fucking car, dude, and <laughs> he walks with a limp. He walks up, like, if these are his four legs and a normal dog walks like this, he's got two over here, two over here, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a fucking sidewinder, and his tongue's never in his mouth, dude. He's one of them. Half pit bull, half boxer, full of energy, good dog, you know, he's just a little... He's a little. He lags behind sometimes. You, know? <laughs> you got a Brandon dog like that Dom dog. Remember? What you mean? Remember when we had the Dom dog? I said half German Shepherd, half pit bull. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon got them jokes. Baby. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get it back Monday. He's, he's gonna roast the shit out of me. You half boxer, half pit bull, dude. He's Leon Edwards. Ooh <laughs> man, that dude's tough. Now I just found out that Brandon's terrified of animals. Some of them. That, that tracks. Some of That them. tracks. I never thought about you it. You want to explain what happened yeah, to Jake's so house? Yeah, so I went to uh, Jake's Muncie's house, and um, he had a cat. And as soon as he let the a cat out. Cat, dude. Now, squeaks. Um, squeaks. Squeaks. Yeah, so Squeaks came up. And see, I got to get used to cats. This is my third time like ever seeing a cat in like, person, like holding it or touching it. I didn't Only touch three? it or hold it. So every time it came up to me, I just stand up like naturally. Like just be like, okay. And everybody, you can sit down. It's okay. I don't, because I don't know, man, what's going to happen. <laughs> like, the what cat, if it's think the nicest happen. cat in the world? I know, I know. Yeah, he, he was so cool. Cat. Like, I'm gonna hold him next time. I told myself, <laughs> he's I working his way up look, to it. Nobody was telling him to hold him. That Jake would just have him on him, and yeah. then he'll let him down. And then if the cat came by Brandon anywhere, like within five feet, Brandon yeah. just stood up. Damn, just why he's talking, like, because yep. he he also talked for two hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> he also told us batshit crazy stories yeah. for two hours straight. It's okay, man. I'm scared of pussy too. Sometimes oh, yeah. it happens. Yeah, that happens. was a scary ass pussy. I'm gonna get especially used to when it. they're all hairy like Squeaks is. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like full bush? Oh, I'm, hey, hey. I, I did it for the for the joke, <laughs> for the love of the game. I'm down. Yeah. Full bush or not, dude. Some Bob Ross, George huh? W. and H. W. Dude. <laughs> Damn. Oh, Scared shit. of Squeaks. I will say we were. I went over to Jake's to record a podcast, and Squeaks was on the that little round table, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Jake was like, "I fixed the map, Africa and Greenland." Where I was like, "I didn't fucking nobody knows that besides you, Jake." I hope you know that people are not aware of this fucking geography that you're <laughs> exactly. so concerned about. But um, he it's was Squeaks was on <laughs> straight up. It's that That's tism, tism, dude. He's got a fucking wood map. Each piece, each country is its own wooden piece that he put together on the wall and spaced it out. 
like the Mercator projection. And it's badass. It's I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, how? But how he thinks anybody? He could have put a whole country in a place it wasn't supposed to be. You I could throw have fifteen clue. fake countries in there. Nobody <laughs> would that. know. Yeah. Nobody would Nobody know. Nobody would. <laughs> Dom can't even locate the countries that he was stationed in. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't lying. There's no way I could find Kyrgyzstan but, right now. Squeaks was up there on like that round table, and we were just doing it. And I went to like adjust the mic a little bit uh-huh. in the middle, and he clawed the shit out of me, dude. Oh, fuck. so he See, does have a about. he does have a mean streak in him, dude. Yeah. Plus, but I saw he do that thing. He clawed where, you. Yeah, but like it was just like barely, yeah, yeah. You know, barely. I, Jake's probably gonna be like, "Don't say that about Squeaks. <laughs> Don't say that." I'm sorry, Jake. It happened, dude. Don't deny it, dude. Don't be a victim blamer. <laughs> Jake was in there giving that bad uh, Squeaks a full body massage. Oh my god, he uh, loves that cat. Loves the cat. I, I love, love the fact that he loves that yeah, cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Hell really yeah. cool. It's just so <laughs> awesome to see people genuinely passionate about something. Yeah. And it's so funny, like, his humor is so dark, but he's so loving towards the cat. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you saw that fucking <laughs> Civil War musket he's got up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the first thing I saw. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Oh, uh, my God. Speaking of which, I went to the gun range for my first time. Ooh, what? Yes, what? I did. Tell us about and this. I did good, actually. You passed like, the psych test? Oh, no, they just let me in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's Alabama. Yeah. What, what happened? Man, well, what'd you shoot? What'd you shoot? Man, it was, I shot up just I, whatever they handed me. Handgun, like, I, I went in handgun, there. Handgun, yeah, handgun. Shotgun. Yeah, it was handgun. Okay. My uncle has two. He has one for laser. Then my mom got one for laser. So everybody was just like, Brandon, you want to shoot Don't fuck with one? Brandon. Yeah, and yeah. I was Don't just rarely like, yeah, though. I even got a picture. Like, it's so, look at how dumb I look in this picture. It look crazy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm so like, you got me next to the gun range. I'm just... <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? He's got the gun like he does the point. He's like, yeah, they're like, yeah. they're like, you're too happy, Brandon. And you know what's crazy when I was there though? As soon as I got there, I looked back. There was a whole fucking class of rabbis, which I, you guys are some what? good, yeah. And they were shooting it down rabbis. too. Yeah, like one dude, he was like, this is how you shoot this. I just heard. I'm like, damn. What the fuck was they shooting? Hey, the, anti- Man, the anti-Semitism's rifle, they, ramping up. They ain't fucking having hey, it, dude. You better, y'all better stick Those Alabama shit. rabbis. Yeah, it was like rifles and shotguns, man. The big shit. Oh, okay, I'm Desert stop. Eagles. They're Israeli shit, made. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop uh, using my Jew jokes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of these motherfuckers. This is going to be might, a red dot in your head. They might pull and I'll be like, up. I knew you were Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to teach him, too. Let's see if you click right there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you did it right. You're a true one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, we, I went to uh, Stand Up Live. It was Jalen's and Dan Price's. Jalen Brown and Dan Price's first time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. performing yep. at Stand Up Live on a show, right? On, on oh, page show, wow. yeah. On a, on a, on Congratulations, a page show. Dan Congratulations, Dan and Jalen. You'll see Dan later. Yep, yep. In just a, actually a couple <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Hey! Sound effects. We we're legit now, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. But, but Jalen went first. Well, Scott Easton did. Uh, he did. He 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 went first. He opened it up, and then Jalen went and I swear just murdered. And he Hell does. Yeah. And, and Jalen, he's on the first episode. Go watch him. You'll you'll understand his mind. Hilarious. And mm-hmm. he's hilarious. And he says the riskiest jokes. And it worked with every single person. I in love there. it. I and love he had it. a he he started it off. Had a callback. I won't give away any of his jokes, but it was beautiful. Dan went up next. Dan killed him. It was some uh, it was some older uh, rowdy older ladies in the front. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Dan's Dan. favorite. Oh, 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 they love them some Dan, baby. <laughs> Dan Price, pay the price, dude. Mm-hmm. The price is right. Hell yeah, well, the that price was, is right, dude. That, that was that was a fun. And then went to shenanigans after, and fucking Jake Muncy won shenanigans. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep, he won. Won the open mic. He killed it, though. It oh my perfect, god, man. killed it. Oh Jake? my gosh, yeah. behind Brent. enemy lines, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan came back <laughs> down twenty in the fourth quarter, dude. Lights out. Tracy McGrady, thirteen points in thirty seconds, dude. It was they love great. him. Yeah, he was great. They I love him. it, dude. I love it. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a beast. He's mm-hmm. he's an up and comer. He was on. He filled in for you yep. on Nico's episode, and uh, we'll get him on his own episode because got his, to his Funny mind just got works. To. I love Jake. That's that's my guy, Jake. I seriously think, like in terms of my humor, I truly do think he's the funniest person in Huntsville. In terms mm-hmm. of like what I find funny, uh-huh. like yeah. something about his style just resonates with me. I like it because it's smart, it's quick. You don't know what's gonna happen. He always beats you to the punch. Always. Mm-hmm. I know his jokes. I still laugh. When yeah, he goes up there. same here. I know his jokes, and I still get uh, surprised. Mm-hmm. I get giddy when it's Jake the, goes up. I pay attention. Yeah, same here. It's just the way he performs. Mm-hmm. You motherfuckers don't want to know the truth. Yeah, Y'all don't I love know. They don't that. want you to know the truth. That's just fucking bad. Oh, I got the light. They don't want you to know the truth. I'm trying to tell you, but they don't want you to know. 
<laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's perfect, man. And he's so chill up there, too, man. It's yeah. Like amazing. You know he's nervous, but it doesn't come yeah. off that way. I only know he's nervous because I know him mm-hmm. yeah. as a person. Yeah. Like, it's just. You would think he's know. stone cold up there. Yeah. yeah. Just. Just out there doing it for the love of the game. Which Literally he sitting in the mm-hmm. pocket, dude. He'll, yeah. He will sit down on that stool and still crack everybody up. Yep. Like on Wednesday when he sat down. Uh-huh. Dude, I, I fucking love it. So nonchalant. <laughs> just just going out there. He dude. knows that shit is funny. Hell yeah. But he doesn't. But it is. He de- he doesn't know, but he knows. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he'll be like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Jake, he knows, dude. You go, whenever you go to all these open mics and you get a new crowd... And they're laughing every single time. I mean, they're laughing. Even we mm-hmm. went. There was one at the boxcar where the people. Uh, there was two only two people there, and they did not like the uh, one of his jokes about school shooting. Yeah, and they didn't like that, and uh, still got him back by the end of the set, like yeah, all the that, way back. Like like they're participating in his act. <laughs> back was That's that the funny. couple that was sitting up yeah. close to the stage? Uh-huh. Yeah. They were they were fun though. Yeah, they were they were great. They were them. into them. They were into it. Yeah, yeah, they they, they, were, list, they were listening yeah. to everybody. They were uh, fucking laughing with everybody. They wasn't like, giving away the laughs. No, but you could earn them, which is not the same for every crowd. Some people just have decided before they you even go up there they don't want to laugh. Yeah, I said, oh my gosh, on Wednesday I said that Trump joke, and there was this little Hispanic girl in the back, and she just looked at me like. And I was like, dude, you didn't like me before I got up here. I know. I get it, dude. I get it. It's okay. I'll cry about it later. <laughs> you talking about the Hispanic on, on that were on the left side of the stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They didn't. They didn't. They didn't like my. I went a little hard. I was because I had two jokes, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, they haven't worked. And my favorite thing to do is to do jokes in front of a crowd that haven't worked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's that's where I really get off. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to see. I was like, I punched them up a little bit. Let's see if they get some laughs. And they are hard. I mean, they got they got the Asian. Uh, <laughs> you got that joke in there. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a little rough. But I knew that going in. Yeah. But uh, I was like, because if they don't work, I'm throwing them out. At least for right now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. gonna throw them away. And they didn't. But she was. <laughs> 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 they didn't work. <laughs> but she. But she definitely didn't yeah. like them. The, the the two guys at the bar. There was a couple guys at the bar that was having a good time. But uh, yeah, I looked over there. What? Because mm-hmm. Dan was like, "You got to start making eye contact with the crowd." Yeah. So I'm trying to look people in their eyes, and I look over there, and she's like, "Just like you said." Yeah. Just not happening. <laughs> yeah. just, and I get it. I get. I'm not mad at them. Yeah, no, no, it's, no. it's it's fun for me to get those kind of reactions. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, like yeah. at least you're doing something. The worst thing you can do is just sit there and just like straight face. Nothing. Yeah. Like that one lady. That was up close. She was not. She didn't like my set, but from what I could tell, she didn't like anybody else's either. No, she oh, didn't like yeah, one person. Oh yeah, I saw that set. too. She was yeah. so straightforward. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't like one person set. I I remember because everybody was talking about it. They were like, dude, when when it's in yeah. the middle of the crowd in that stone face, because it was mm-hmm. literally your mic's right here and she was right there. Yeah, and it yes. was stone face. Like it's ten feet away. Yeah, just <laughs> like staring she, straight at you, just like. Not even giving you nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Not 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 even a hint of anything. Arms mm-hmm. folded, right? Yeah. 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 Like she was up, mad at like, you. Yeah. She went to the shenanigans too, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. I Maybe. think that's looser there. Yeah. Looser there though. Oh uh, yeah. Gotcha. She was more yeah, she was yeah. enjoying Well, it. and then plus it yeah. wasn't right in the middle, so who knows if she was looser, but I was kinda of, I was kind of keeping an eye on it. it looked like <laughs> yeah. me, she me was too. Honestly. I was keeping an eye on it. Yeah, yeah. Keeping tabs on it. We had a lockdown. I watch the crowd. <laughs> Whenever I know, like when I know jokes that mm-hmm. I like or I, I think the crowd's like not going to like. I know exa- I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I look straight to the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see the crowd's face. Whenever. I love it, dude. I love it. It's the best part. It's the best part. Oh, yeah. I like going on after those people. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that day we were, I think me and you were like 12 and 13. We got the yeah. sign-up sheet late. Mm-hmm. And I had been warned about that lady before. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to bow down. So I looked at her like several times throughout my set. Same face every time. Mm. Same yeah. fucking face every time. I don't even think she blinked. Like a statue. Yeah. Well, speaking of these sets, yeah. let's watch some clips. Hell See some yeah. clips, dude. Fat Sammy's Fusion open mic. Mm-hmm. Clip of the week. Go. I'm talking to you right now. All right, <laughs> all right so uh, what do you think I am? What race do you think I am? Samoan. Samoan? See, that's a good one. That's a good one. See, a lot of times people don't know what I am. Like, you don't know whether I own the gas station or I'm going to rock. You know what I mean? But no, no, no. I'm mixed. I'm half black, half white. Half time cops don't know why to beat my ass. Yeah, I don't know. 
And that's fucked up. My dad's a 6'2 black guy, my mom's a short German woman, and I came out looking like Princess Jasmine's dad. <laughs> Anything right? Anything right? Yeah, <laughs> I used that one because it was your like attempt at crowd work. But yeah. nobody was giving you anything, bro. They did not help you at all. You, oh my in gosh. the be, in the beginning, I was like, I was trying to get the people in the back. I was like, <laughs> hey, you guys in the back. Yeah, <laughs> look, bro. I swear to God, I'm sitting here like, hey, you guys in the back. Hey, mm-hmm. you guys in the back on the back wall. I even I think I say something like the girl right the bench. here, the, the bench, <laughs> the bench in the back. Hey, they didn't. Not only they weren't even talking. They didn't look up in the slightest, so I, that's why I went to the guys at the bar. I'm like, hey, you, know, you guys will talk to me, right? <laughs> oh, you're looking at me. Let's talk to you, dude. <laughs> but, I mean, that material yeah. normally works. I've heard, you, I've heard you say that yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of times. I just thought it was funny that dude said you look Samoan. Because Samo- yeah. when I first met you, I thought a lot of things. Like, it could be one of <laughs> any of these things. Samoan was never one of them. Maybe if you were wearing, like, a sleeveless shirt and you had some tribal tattoos, like, yeah. okay, maybe. Like... <laughs> I mean, you got Rikishi. <laughs> this nigga Brandon just said I look like Rikishi. Yeah, you're Fuck not the you. rock, dude. <laughs> Fuck you, nigga. You ain't shit. Brandon be coming with these sneak, yeah. hey, these sneak disses. <laughs> Hey, what dude. else? What'd you what'd you say about me? Uh, At the when we were with the cat. Yeah. Okay. So the cat, uh, Jack was he was like giving the cat was giving them biscuits, and he was like, "Yeah, you can get on my tits or something." Now I looked at Dom. I was like, "Well, if you want some tits, just go to Dom." <laughs> <laughs> he was fucked up at that point. He said, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. No, no. Look, the cat was trying to. He's Jake said that uh, cats try to nurse on on humans. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then so he was trying to uh, look like he was trying to pull down Jack's uh, shirt to get yeah. his titty, mm-hmm. and then Brandon's gonna say, "Well, he really would love to." <laughs> Damn, Brandon, I, I fuck, love it. Dude. I'm fucking Brandon up tomorrow. I know. I know, I'm it's, a, I, it. I know it's a roast for Santa Claus at the shop. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a roast for Santa Claus, but half my jokes gonna be about Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I love it. We'll use those clips for next week's episode. I just couldn't believe he said you look Samoan because I never once thought yeah. that, dude. If you were Samoan, you wouldn't be the Rock. You'd be the Boulder. This nigga been holding on to that. Shit. I kept trying to say it, but then Brandon went into the cat thing, and I didn't want to interrupt that. But I was sitting on that one. <laughs> I wanted to say that it. was good. All right, let's see what JJ got going on. Just being honest, there's also a firearm store in Madison called Last Resort Guns, and my whole thing with that is, what is that supposed to mean? It seems like there's no good answer for that. Is it a thing of like, oh, nobody else will sell you a gun? Come on down. We'll hook you up. We accept traveler's checks and we don't ask questions. Or is it more of a thing of like, do you feel like your life is unfixable? Like the crushing weight of reality is just going to destroy your life. You can't get out of this, you know? They say suicide's not an option, but it is. You know, plenty of people do it. Look at the statistics. It's trending right now. And don't worry. <laughs> it's true, dude. It's just like the child soldier thing. You, can, you say what you want about the joke. The facts are undeniable. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just so good. Last resort jokes. Uh, a last resort gun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those what my last resort jokes. That's my set. <laughs> that's what my. No, that's what I titled my jokes. No way, too. <laughs> In the home, when you say that, because <laughs> it is. What does that mean? What is the? What is? What are they trying to say yeah. about mm. their business? They have that billboard right over there on the interstate, and it says "Last Resort Guns," and mm-hmm. it's like a, just a picture of like a Glock, <laughs> and then at the bottom it says "Church Security Training Classes." Okay, yeah, that's it's crazy. That's a message right there. That's it's a, crazy. Hey, that's how we do it in Alabama. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. damn it! <laughs> don't don't fuck you with don't, church. Yeah, yeah, no, don't go with the church because they will fuck you up. Yeah, they that will. church will. Uh, Mm-hmm. Preachers yeah. carry guns and goddamn church down here. Oh, sure. Stay strapped, dude. Mm-hmm. They got the Thou shalt not kill, but they, they gonna let yourself. you see Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> eye for an eye. You, yeah. yeah. you come in shooting, they will return fire, dude. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta blast a motherfucker. That's True what I'm that. saying, dude. <laughs> in the name of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Make heaven full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give him a new spot. <laughs> <laughs> we just trying to fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need more people. Oh shit! Honestly, no, no. If you get shot trying to kill him, you're going to hell. You're not going to heaven, right? <laughs> I don't, you don't know. I the don't reasons. know. Yeah, you never know. You what. don't know the reasons. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah. yeah, he could just but, walk in there. But this is uh this is the same night. Our clips from the same night, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, the crowd wasn't wasn't given yeah. anything. This is what we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that joke's good. I don't go fuck that. Hey. Last resort, suicide. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's right there. But like, that's the that's the only 
other place besides Boxcar. I've said yeah. that joke, mm-hmm. and nobody laughed at Stumbled it. over the line, oh, yeah. which I do mm-hmm. every time yeah. I go Well, when up. you're four Jack and Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just glad mm-hmm. I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, but the joke. The whole premise of it, last resort's gun. If you if you live in Alabama, you see the fucking sign for it. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck does? Because you don't. Th- when I was riding by, I never thought about it until you said it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. what the fuck does that mean? There last is no good gun? answer. Yeah. Like, there's no like, what is it? Like, there's nothing <laughs> good about there. That has no good meaning. Yeah. There's no potential for a positive reasoning behind the name of that business. <laughs> yes. What the hell? Last yeah. resort. Last resort. Last for resort. For anything. Last resort for the ex. What? That could be anything. <laughs> Suicide. You finna kill somebody. Mm. School, well, who knows? You're killing somebody. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. You're taking a drastic measure. If it's last resort, if yeah. it's just, last resort, in the climate, the social climate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not a very political guy myself, but I would say that's a little bit unsavory to name <laughs> yeah. your business last when gun resort. violence is growing at an unprecedented rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, but, I don't think that travelers' checks uh, line that tag never gets laughed. I would trade. Mm-hmm. I would. I would. I would. I would change that. But uh, that part. So you know, yeah. keep the keep the suicide. And then change the part and just uh, about something that, like last resort, like you couldn't get a gun because you're about to kill. You know, you're a murderer. Yeah. But at last resort, guns. You know, the same. <laughs> some, not up. that, but you know, yeah. when you're away, saying uh, <laughs> something about that. Can you not pass the red flag laws? <laughs> Come on down. We hey. do not discriminate. It's against our beliefs. <laughs> hey, anybody could do it. Also, notice we talked a lot about like religious figures being strapped today first brandon yeah. brought up the re- the rabbis at the firing yeah, range, shot, mm-hmm. then preachers lot. being strapped and we know yeah. that we know we know the muslim got it on, oh, come on, on that yeah. yeah yeah they got, got the big thing you know i guess the rabbis do too oh yeah just found Dude, out that I ain't no rab- <laughs> rabbis was gangbanging like that i didn't either i was shocked i looked around like the fuck they all just came in there. He's like, okay, so what you do is this. And it was like one of the main ones. What you do is this. I was like, shit, what the fuck? Hey, man, after that fucking Hamas rocket hit, <laughs> the sales of firearms uh-huh. to Jewish people skyrocketed, dude. Yeah. You got to defend the homeland, dude. You got to. Mm-hmm. You got to. It's the Holy Land is what they say. It's yeah. what, they, it's what it's a few few different groups say. True that. <laughs> shit, I don't know, dude. I'm just white and confused. <laughs> All right, guys. This interview is about to be amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is going to be the easiest interview we've ever done. Yeah. And isn't this the uh, episode where, isn't it Clyde Elroy and... uh Roskin, Ros- Roscoe Ray Nathan? Roskin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who, what's the, like, say both the names right <laughs> okay, now. Okay, so it's Roscoe Ray Nathan and Clyde Elroy. Ooh. He got it right. Yeah, yes, yeah, he yeah. did. We joked on him so hard, he went home and practiced. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote it like a hundred times on his piece of paper. Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, the Horseshoe Showdown. That is mm-hmm. a showdown. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, same yeah, here. Yeah. I wonder who's gonna win. To see it. The uh, championship. Is it gonna be Christmas Day is coming early, Ooh. December twenty fifth, <laughs> the exact day that it is. <laughs> Improvisation, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no one better. Hell yeah! <laughs> but I also love that part where you're like, I got whiskey, you know, crown because I'm classy, <laughs> you know, Kachiba. Because I'm rich, you know? <laughs> I was thinking, you could tell, I was like, I got hyped once I said, because I'm rich. Because I'm the seventh time. <laughs> <laughs> you like tricked yourself. You're like, you know, I am the shit, actually. <laughs> man, that was really good. Oh, shit, that was great, man. Yeah. And I didn't know Brandon was going to play that character like he didn't fuck with me at all, but he yeah. fucked with your yeah. character. I was like, okay, this is the <laughs> dynamic. I'll fucking beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, I was like... You know how them announcers always are. Like, the one dude, if you got a dude that's been there for 25 years, like, let's say Kobe was there and he had another dude that just came in there. Who you going to pick? Yeah. Yeah. See? I see mm-hmm. what you mean. Yeah, so I was like, that would be some good-ass chemistry. Yep. Yeah. It's a good yeah. dynamic, dude. Good dynamic, mm-hmm. man. Can't teach that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you guys will probably see it right now. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. Nah. Yeah. But we out. Let's roll some Santa Clauses. <laughs> we got some skits. Right there, that would have been a standing ovation for what you are about to see. It's going to be like Rocky versus Creed, Balboa versus somebody. This is Roscoe Ray Nathan versus Clyde Elride, two gladiators that are going to be horseshoeing it out. And you know what? Like Roscoe Ray Nathan said, yes, that is right. Christmas is here early, bitches, and we're going to get it going. This is the press conference. This is now. This is the time. Let's get started. 
Today we got two gladiators ready to just fight it off. Starting us off, the legendary Roscoe Ray Nathan. Hell yeah. And then this uh this newcomer, Clyde Elrod. Fuck you, Rick. Fuck you, Elrod. Yeah. Fuck him, Rick. Yeah, fuck him. He ain't about shit. Seven time champion right here. God damn it. Mm -hmm. The only way they can finish somebody off is if they tag team him if you catch my drift. Oh yeah, we do a lot of tag team where I'm from, boy. Yep. We'll hit you up like a billy goat. Hell yeah. Roscoe, you so fucking old, you need a fucking wheelchair. I'll push you down the stairs. I'm not above hurting the handicapped. It's pretty funny that you think you can push something when you still got Similac on your breath. Just because you park at the front of the building don't mean you the shit. It means you fucking crippled. You got damn right I'm crippled, and I'm going to cripple your ass when I'm out there sh pitching these shoes. We'll see about that. We will see about it, motherfucker. We all remember that 09 when you tried deflating them horseshoes. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I swear to God. You had that. Those claims have never been confirmed. Never. We got the proof. You're just full of nonsense. You better say allegedly or I'll sue your ass. Can we get a check on this guy's birth certificate? I think he's sourcing his shoes from Arabian horses, if you know what I mean. Oh, you motherfucker. I pulled up today in my 94 Mustang. Fox body. V6. 112 horsepower. Who gives a fuck? I drive a 2019 Honda Civic, you son of a bitch. Yeah. That's good. Economical. That is true. Good car. That is true. Yeah. Respect. Shaved off my beard to make me more aerodynamic. Now I'm fucking shaped like a horseshoe. You sure that's not a kitty diddler mustache you got on there? Because you look like Chester the Molester. That's fucking bullshit, man. 17 is legal in many states. But not all. First up, the challenger. From the mountains of Mississippi, Clyde Elright. Look at this fan smacking his ass. He's so excited. And, oh, looks like he dropped the horseshoe. Who knows? And here he is, the champion, the one, the only, Roscoe Ray Nathan. This guy is my hero. He has been holding this belt for seven years, and here he is to defend it once again. Look at the champion moving so confidently. Is he, oh, wait a minute, hold up, no! Is this, oh. My gosh, this can't be. Look at Roscoe Ray Nathan. He's tripping all over himself. He's falling to the ground. Oh, this is horrible. One of the worst incidents we have ever seen in horseshoeing history. This is bad. His hair came off. He's suffering. Will he recover? Call an ambulance. Here is the championship round. First up, you got Clyde Elroy, who is, he is eh. And, well, he made it. Next, we got Roscoe Ray Nathan, the one, the only, and yes, that's what's up. He's a little injured, but he can do it. All right. Ooh, that was a perfect response. Okay, let's see what he does now. He's going to shoot it, and bam, just like that. Kapow, he gets it there. What? Ooh, straight off the tree, he makes it like that, and let's see what that, ooh, that looked like a paraplegic pterodactyl. Ooh, he gets it from the back. This is for all the marbles. And he gets it, he gets it, he gets it, he, no, no, he misses it, he missed, this is unbelievable. Look at the crowd, everybody's going crazy, this is pandemonium. I cannot believe, for the first time in seven years, Roscoe Ray Nathan has lost it all. Look at all the fans go, and look at everybody suffering, this is bad, even I was suffering that day. This is a horrible day to be in America, folks, I just can't believe it, Roscoe Ray Nathan has finally lost the belt. Whew. And then we got Elroy over here. He thinks he's the shit now. He thinks he's so happy, he's celebrating, he's having a good day. Well, guess what? Ray Nathan's gonna come back one day and take it all away from you. You just watch and enjoy it with your fans today. This is bullshit. I'm ashamed right now. Never been more ashamed in my life. I haven't missed a pitch in seven years. Haven't missed a pitch in seven years. And this young son of a bitch got me. Now, I do believe there was some time foolery going on. And I'll take that to my grave. A son of a bitch. My knee is messed up. Pretty sure I have anal leakage. It's, it's, it's just not good right now, guys. This is Roscoe Ray Nathan signing off. What you're looking at right now, ladies and gentlemen, is a champion. I have the heart of a champion, the cock of a warrior. And I heard there was a little bit of a dispute, some accusations floating around, and they wouldn't be the first accusations of my career of some tomfoolery going on with his knee injury. The man's 75 years old. Of course, his fucking knee blew out. His patella is older than my fucking grandfather. Yeah, I got passionate fans, but they wouldn't do nothing like that. I love all my fans, even the homosexuals. 
All I'm saying is sometimes you got to pass the torch, even if you got to pass it to yourself. You got to manifest your own destiny. This week's featured comedian. Seriously love Huntsville. Uh, we moved here right after I got out of the Marine Corps and uh, 15 years ago, which is a strange admission because I, I know what you're thinking. I know what I look like. I don't look like... I look like maybe the closest I got to being in the military was I had a stepdad who was in Vietnam. <laughs> right? Like, maybe I deployed once in defense of a pizza. <laughs> I, I get it. Like, and, and the Marine Corps is the worst of all of them, because I definitely don't look... Marines will tell you, like, well, the Marine Corps made me the man I am today. Not true in my case. Marine Corps made me the man I was 15 years ago. Man I am today? Jack Daniels. <laughs> And if I'm honest, Taco Bell, frankly. If I'm, if I'm honest, way too much Taco Bell. I didn't eat my feelings, is what I'm saying. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm too old for that now. I gotta stop eating like that. I gotta start eating better. I know I, uh, I was just at the store yesterday. I bought some broccoli, a couple of heads of broccoli, a couple of bunches of asparagus. Uh, no intention to eat that stuff, but we needed rubber bands. And, and it just, it occurred to me, like, dude, you're old enough now, you gotta start eating better. 45 years old, 45 years old. Uh, and normally when you see a guy 45 doing stand-up comedy, what you're watching is a Netflix special. <laughs> and tonight what you're watching is a blazing midlife crisis. That's what this is right here. Harley Davidson can kiss my ass. This is what it looks like. This is it. You want to introduce our guest for this week, JJ? Yeah, today we have uh, a very good friend of mine. Very good comedian, very right. articulate, amazing writer. You know, I did a school project on him. Mm. <laughs> it was, it was. A, I did a thousand word paper, matching presentation. Killed it, dude. Killed it. Best five minutes I've ever done. <laughs> Today we have Dan Price. Hey. hey, hold up. And I think, well, thank you for uh, having me, and thanks for feeding us. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming. Pulled on, pork man. was good. Yeah, pulled pork was good. You guys talk. I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> Especially because you look like you shouldn't eat quick. pork. <laughs> <laughs> See, JJ been going ever since I rose it on that one time. I said one joke. Yeah, you lit the hey. fire, dude. <laughs> My salam alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> Moonshine ping pong. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Why don't you tell us about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's just an informal uh, sketch comedy collective, just mm -hmm. trying to put a wrapper around uh, some group work that we're trying to do, collaborating on sketch comedy. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, you know one of the meetings, and you guys were on it. Sierra's sitting there. She yeah. she'll mm -hmm. type everything up. Wow. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah, right. So Sierra is a part of it. Uh, Sierra Moses, uh, Alex Z, um, Jalen has been a part of our uh, mm -hmm. idea sessions for since the beginning. Uh, people have come, people come and go. Sci-fi, um, Bryce, mm -hmm. a couple of the guys mm -hmm. you've had on the show. So, really, just trying to give people a space to come up with creative ideas. We're we're good on creative ideas. We just have to turn it and execute. Yeah, yeah. just you know, just shooting it, yeah. just do Tricky. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just do it. The stuff you've put out so far is really good. Yeah, it's yeah. well True. shot, mm -hmm. well directed. The um, validation station ones. Oh yeah, with yeah. Sierra, yeah. Jalen, yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. I liked all of them. Yeah, so, yeah. That actually happened really quickly. We collaborated on that idea and. And shot it same day it was uh yeah. it was really quick so those are the best ones <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we me and dom one time do you remember when we tried to write that sketch oh we're like let's God. film a sketch and we came and we just could not get anything on it paper. was the word was, was it is like taylor yeah. swift uh, we were trying to use taylor swift lyrics and and like make it like we had just killed somebody like it was something yeah. wild like it didn't make it we didn't it made shoot no anything. sense we didn't shoot anything <laughs> no, we, we didn't get one piece of footage but then after that we shot blue chew Oh yeah, which yeah. is it was so fun. Yeah, yeah. no, y'all sketches are great. It's, well, it's good. Thank is there gonna be a sketch on this show too? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, horseshoe so, showdown. Yeah, this is the horseshoe showdown. Yeah, so, so. we don't we don't get to see this stuff. We ha we have no idea. So yeah. today's the showdown. Yeah, it's the championship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Christmas Day coming early. That's good. Uh -huh. On December twenty fifth. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> the exact day. Who did so it? so you're an eighties baby. Yeah, uh, <laughs> seventies baby. Seventies baby. Yeah, eighties mm. toddler and beyond. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm. Give what? What was your shows in the eighties? Oh, A Team, a hundred percent. Yeah, the Dukes of Hazard, which I don't know if that holds up. Mm -hmm. am, I, is, am I okay with Dukes of Hazard? Oh yeah, that's look good. at me, dude. You're okay it. with Dukes. Of loved, Hazard. I love it. <laughs> love Dukes of Hazard. Uh, if I'm honest, Golden Girls. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, so I watched good. that one with my grandma. 
taught me everything I know about sex and relationships. Blanche. Yeah. <laughs> Blanche. Blanche. Yeah. She was a loose one. Blanche, Blanche was, was naughty. And it's, <laughs> it explains why I still have a thing for uh, wealthy older men. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. That's true. Anything by that guy uh, Donald P. Belisario? You remember him? He was uh, yes. he was at the A Team. He was also Quantum Leap. He had like oh. several shows that were like that. I, okay, I loved okay. all of those adventure shows from the eighties. Magnum PI, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, that Fantasy cool. Island. Oh yeah, Fantasy mm-hmm. Island was big. Mm-hmm. That Hell was yeah. that was a very strange show. Like that was more seventies than it was eighties, mm-hmm. and I don't think I my head had quite wrapped around what I was watching there. But yeah, <laughs> Fantasy I'm, Island was great. Mm-hmm. Boss, the plane, the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, it was uh, that was good. And the uh, what was the other one that was like Fantasy? The Love Boat was mm. at the same time. Mm. It was about a cruise ship, and it was like the the recurring cast of characters was just the cr- the ship's crew. And then every week they would have uh, guest stars would be on the cruise, hmm. and there was always some drama. So it would be oh, like wow. all it was a vehicle for all of the studio actors at ABC or whoever had the show. Oh wow, and that was one that yeah. I got to watch. I don't, Saturday I don't... Night Live. I was like oh, not allowed to watch mm-hmm. it, but I would sneak it uh, whenever I could. Saturday Night Live, the Carson Show, uh-huh. huge Muppet Show, mm-hmm. was awesome. Mm-hmm. Hey Saturday Night Live, you've been watching? You still watch? Yeah, yeah, you still watch? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I still do too. They a lot of people like to say it's uh gone downhill, but I mm. they sometimes they have good ones. Yeah. You know, sometimes but it's it's always been like that. Yeah. It, even whenever you like Will Ferrell and all yeah. that went on there, it wasn't like everyone was it's a like banger. our podcast, true. <laughs> Some are better than others. Uh, yeah. yeah that's it's never right. the guest fault. It's always ours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, we, we lost camera. Uh <laughs> sorry, oh, Sierra. Well, I think I just bad. think what they do every week is magic. I, you know, they go from a brand new person shows up on Monday mm-hmm. to producing a live show on Saturday. That's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Well oiled machine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Honed over decades. Exactly. <laughs> and some of the hosts, like you said, some of the hosts really get it. Yeah. yeah. That are totally in. Ryan yeah. Gosling. Oh, dude. dude. One of, probably my favorite Fantastic. SNL host. Yeah. Yeah, the Papyrus bit. I love, I love, that's <laughs> my Avatar. favorite one. <laughs> I know what so you good. did. And I at the end, like, he, he plays along with it like he actually did fuck <laughs> everybody over. I love it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That shit made me laugh. I was looking for fonts for a sci-fi as a skit, and I seen papyrus. I almost yeah. did it, but it didn't fit. <laughs> oh, hey, speaking of that, speaking of fonts, I got you guys oh, something for the oh, wall. Shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, snap. Took a little time to try to figure out a, a font solution since the actual font was not available. Oh, d- oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. What you shut it? the fuck oh, up. Oh, lethal weapon hold three. Hold, 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 hold this shit up, dude. This is crazy, dude. <laughs> Get the fuck oh, out of here. You are crazy. That's, that's really what cool. the picture was for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what... I thought we were getting sold on Wayfair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude. Look at that. So, so cool. Yeah, so I've, I've been that's thinking so about it. well done. You guys reminded me of some movie poster, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I was going through, and I was thinking it was like maybe Tango and Cash. It was something. And then I hit hit me and i was going through i was like oh it's it's freaking lethal weapon you guys are lethal weapon i'm danny glover dude thank you dude (laughs) you're the man dude that's so look at how good this is dude and i love your back to the future so i think it kind of goes with the movie theme oh my gosh man so yeah thanks for thanks for doing this i love i love what you guys are doing here yeah man you shut the fuck up dude i cannot believe this shit damn i look good oh my yeah you're you guys all look good. You guys yeah, all he look. Did you right? You he guys did you all right. look he fine. Gave you like, yeah. He gave you like a jaw suck in, a tummy tuck and shit. Well, JJ, yeah. half of your hair in that picture is actually Mel Gibson's hair. So <laughs> oh, you just need to own it, man. Own Hell it. yeah, dude. And I have similar views as well. <laughs> Damn. That's, man. That's Thank Jack. you, man. That's awesome. Oh, dude, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, hell that's yeah. That's so bad. Wow. No, that's so tight. <laughs> Damn. Thank you, Dan. That's how I see thank you guys. You. Just so you know. That's how wow, I see you Wow, you blew Sierra and Nico out of the fucking water with that one. <laughs> and my work here is done. It's great wow. seeing you guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We appreciate all your gifts. Brandon needed the helmet, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna and we're gonna sell that Sierra Moses original. So <laughs> it all works out in the end. Oh, oh my shit. Right, I'm back. Wow. Dude, that took me. I don't even know. That, how do you wow. follow that? I dude? don't know, dude. That's By trying so... to follow him on stage. Hey. There's it's just no hope. Right? Oh, that's ridiculous. There's no hope, dude. <laughs> that's ridiculous. See, no Dan hope. was the guy who went on after we talked about last episode uh, when me and you bombed. And Dan did <laughs> yeah. good. So it's always worse when you bomb and then somebody does really good. <laughs> you can't blame the room you can't anymore. Blame the room. It's like... Wait, where was that? I, I don't even remember that. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. No, where? no, it wasn't. It was at the, the show. It definitely wasn't in Fat Sammy's because nobody did worse than me at Fat Sammy's the other night. 
Where was it? Where was it? Which at show? The show uh, oh, uh, at Homegrown. homegrown. At Homegrown. Show. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We yeah. ate it, dude. We really ate it. Yeah. And you no, came that in was, there. You came in and got the room back. Well, that that was my job. I Fucking had to get that. Bet. Yeah. Yeah. That was Jonathan <laughs> Silver has a gun to my head. I have to give him a hot audience. So that's my <laughs> that's my job. I but hey, it. but you know we're shaking that up going forward. We're shaking that up. So I'm gonna yeah. start hosting to try to get people riled, riled up and then give you the the hot crowd. I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's the way to. Do it I don't think that's how to look at it at all. It, it's gonna be my first mm. time hosting anything. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. So there you go. But so. you're doing a 10 minute spot and hosting, which is a pretty yeah. pretty hefty oh, wow. yeah. plate, dude. Mm-hmm. That is right. Well, doing I get 10, 10 minutes? minutes to get them fired up for you. That's what I got to do. So dang man. That's yeah. that's a that's a hard spot. It's like two minutes of public service announcements, two minutes of random crowd work that'll probably flop, <laughs> and six minutes of tried and true. That's where I'm at. Speaking speaking of crowds, <laughs> at Fat Sam is. is that ten? Is that ten? It's two and two and six? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon would have said yeah, whatever number you say. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Is it? <laughs> yeah, about right. <laughs> at Fat Sammy's, somebody heckled you, man. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, but oh. she has Tourette's, so it's okay. What'd she say? Right. What didn't she say? Yeah. Oh my god! What didn't she say? It was the, the what. It wasn't what she said. It was that when she said it was exactly in the middle. I had some stupid opener where I'm like, "Hey, I really want to talk about procrastination, but maybe now's not the time." That's the joke. <clears throat> but that pause is essential. Uh-huh. I, I, I have to have the pause. So the way the joke went was. Hey, uh, I really want to talk about procrastination. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was I was lost after that. Oh, and shame on me for not having a better response. I could have packed it in. I, there's any number of things I should have done, but uh, that's got to be the, the work for the future. Let's figure out how to deal with that. Yeah, on the fly stuff. I mean, yeah. I would not have been prepared for that either. <clears throat> Don't me neither. I mean, she hit Charlie with a soul-crushing <laughs> heckle at shenanigans. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, uh, and she's and she's actually really funny. Like her stand up comedy mm-hmm. stuff is yeah, good. Mm-hmm. I saw her a couple of nights ago at uh, Carson Elmore's uh, show out in Decatur. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was encouraging, and her name is Min, and I yeah. was like, "Hey, Min, you're really funny. Would love to see you come out. You should come out and make us better comics by heckling us." True. And she thought I was serious about that part, and, <laughs> and I, I should have been prepared. I was not at all prepared. She totally took me off off track completely <laughs> she took it to heart dude whenever mm-hmm. we everybody was off stage and we're shaking hands and stuff i go to shake hands with her i'm like hey you did you did you did really good up there she said fat bitch oh my gosh i was dying <laughs> swear to god she said, fat bitch i, I was, was like well, you know i know you got to rest but that doesn't make me feel any better <laughs> <laughs> you were like, you fat. that wasn't the only person to call you a fat bitch that night either was it dumb <laughs> <laughs> you know it wasn't when, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one when i went up to her i was wearing these shoes I love these. They're Uggs. I just bought them. Paid way too much for them. But Over she 100? was like, are you? Oh, yeah, dude. Really? I'm balling like oh, this, dude. Oh, Come man. on. Comfortability does not have a price. <laughs> Dan, pri- I don't know. Those I don't things know the are, joke. <laughs> those things are hideous, by the way. Can you lift that back <laughs> yeah, up? Yeah, lift that back up. Ooh. Like, whatever amount of money you spent was too much. If it was a nickel. I, I loved just, it. I wow. love it, dude. I love it. It's I'm like stuff in How much clouds. did you spend on them? It's like 118 after tax. Well, but that's because you have confidence in your style. That's mm-hmm. amazing. I could never, well, I could never pull see, that See, my off. style is purely comedic. I'm not trying to and look Uggs. good. I have a mullet, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm committed to this shit. Well, you know? mission accomplished. <laughs> Y'all wear phone posits? <laughs> what? Nobody does phone posits? Why don't you look at Dan? Like, Dan has no clue oh, what a phone, phone posit is. Show you. Penny Hardaway was his basketball player. <laughs> you don't love it. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm not even sure the words that you're using. <laughs> Foam posits, but they're ugly to me. Really? Yeah, I love them. Okay. The we- oh, okay, okay, I remember okay, the okay. weatherman. I, I had those. I sold okay. them. Okay, real cheap. <laughs> Shouldn't done that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen those. I've never worn them. Oh my god! The fine chinas and the weathermans. That was the shit when I was in the seventh grade. Uh. <laughs> Thank you for that reference, yeah. Brandon. I, I would have never remembered nice. that. I regret it. I nice. shouldn't have sold them for fifty. <laughs> I, I've never been in the shoes. You in the shoes, Dan? Uh, not not really. Like you know, I like um, I like a good shoe that feels right, looks mm-hmm. good in the right situations. Mm. But like, if you're going to spend money on a shoe, I guarantee I know this answer. Is it going to be a loafer or you know a dress shoe if you're going to spend good money on it, or not- is it going to be a tennis shoe or a running shoe? Yeah, no, no. So I have uh, – so Olakai's are, are a little more expensive. You got to pay for those. And I wear Olakai's for like a show. 
you know, like on mm-hmm, stage because mm-hmm. they're cool sneakers and they feel great and they're amazing. So I, you know, I'll spend money on that. But otherwise, yeah, if I'm going to spend money, it's on a dress shoe. On a dress shoe, right? Yeah. Not the way loafers. it should be. I'm not a loafers bucks. guy. <laughs> not a loafers guy. You don't so. think you could pull them off? No, it's easy to pull off a loafer. Mm. That's the whole, uh, uh, the whole I point. I see what he did with that one. Yeah. yeah. That's that craftiness. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody pinkies up for comedy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I like yeah, I like the security of a lace up. I like something that like have you ever hit somebody with a Humvee? Did you ever hit anybody with a Humvee and watch their shoes fly off? No. It's crazy. So I just I like lacing no. huh? lacing them real tight. This is, I think you just admitted to a war crime. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, on a full on friendly <laughs> fire. Do you ever run over somebody? No. Dude. No? You ever it's kill a, somebody innocent? <laughs> it's a it's a thing. In a though. comical fashion. <laughs> Their fun. sneakers fly up and get wrapped around the telephone pole. <laughs> Some things you can't unsee. <laughs> oh Dang, shit! Man. So you went around. I mean, you went around the world. Well, I mean, America on the Amtrak, right? Yeah, like half of the country. Half of the country. I did just a, yeah a couple of couple of months ago. Yeah, for third like thirty days, right? No, it was like oh. two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, okay, okay. Because yeah. I was following you on Twitter. I was, oh, follow, yeah. I was following your stops. And well, then I just stopped. I couldn't. I couldn't keep the Twitter game going for that. I know. Yeah, you were updating really fast. Like, what, what was? What was? Give me some good stuff to happen on that. Oh my! There were so many weird things that happened on that. So just so everybody's uh, up to speed. So I, I bought. So okay, let me back up. I had a period from March until late September where I didn't have a single day without a deadline at work, my day job. Right. So it was killing. I mean, like Fourth of July weekend, I was still working on deadlines. I mean, mm. it was just I was beat. I had to step away. So I had a uh, I'd seen this thing. Am- uh, Amtrak has a four hundred and ninety nine dollars USA rail pass. So you can get on and off the train 10 times. And that's it. You can go anywhere, but it's always in coach. And you can do a- anywhere that Amtrak goes. You can go. Uh, ten, you know, 10 times you get on the train and off. So <clears throat> I started going up to, I got on in Birmingham mm-hmm. and then uh, we went up to like Raleigh where my sister lives. I saw her DC. I got some buddies, uh, that I saw up there, uh, did a work thing there. I went to New York city, went up to Hudson Valley, which was amazing. Buffalo. I'd never been to upstate New York, went around to Chicago, uh, saw some friends there, had never been up to the top of the Sears tower, the Willis tower, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. got to do that. Got a, got did a, you go out on the... Uh, I did, yeah. yeah I did the yeah. little glass The glass box thing. thing. Ooh, it's six over the eight edge, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'm fun. scared of heights, too. So I made, too, I made myself. I made myself. <laughs> you, got, you got to. Um, and then went as far as Minneapolis. And then I did a... Uh, I went to Acme Comedy Club. That was the highlight. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I was either going to go to Minneapolis or I was going to go to Quebec. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd be, mm. And so uh, there's a whole backstory about Quebec, but there's a reason I got to go back to Quebec at some point. But anyway, I chose to go it's to for his other family. To yeah. Minneapolis. <laughs> no, no other family. And he stopped in Washington Dude, to I vote in the real election. I don't make enough money for the one family I do have. I'm not. There's no other family living off living off of this money. The Amtrak um, family, as he calls it. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you know, there, that is a real thing. I feel like those guys. A lot of those guys are still part of me. <laughs> uh, but that uh, dude, the train is different, man. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you rode Amtrak for a long distance? I mean, I was young. I mean, probably yeah. like twelve or something like that. Yeah. Anybody? anybody? Y'all? Never. What is the Amtrak? Let me search this. <laughs> okay, so you did, how far did you go in two thousand nine? We went from Birmingham to DC, mm-hmm. and then back down. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's one of the things that's different, right? On a plane, like you know exactly where you're going. You're getting on flight fourteen ninety three. From, you know, Huntsville to Atlanta and then Atlanta to Boston or whatever. You know, it's just, you know, specifically what's going to happen. On an Amtrak, you're just getting on today's crescent, right? And so you don't know, like, if you're going to, if you're trying to get off in some stop, like Lynchburg, Tennessee, or, or like Lynchburg, Virginia, you're like, wait, does the train go, does the crescent go through there? Or do I have to, like, you have to have a map to go with your bookings uh, to make that work. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if you're trying to make your way to a specific place... It's it's funny, man. Everything's non-specific. The trains just exist, <laughs> whether you're on it or not. Trains going, nobody cares. You know, um, the conductors will put people off in the middle of nowhere. Like if they don't like how you're acting or what? whatever, they just put you off the train in the next stop, and they're like, "Sorry, you got to figure it out." And some right. of those stops, there's nothing. 
Oh damn! Some of the stuff. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a whole different world. They're not in the customer service business at all. <laughs> they do not fuck around on Amtrak. Yeah, I, like as a grown man, I've been yelled at all, maybe five times in my life, and three of them were on that Amtrak trip. <laughs> <laughs> like actually yelled at by another grown human being. I'm like, where are we right now? So that that run from uh, Birmingham to to Greensboro, North Carolina, was that. It was a the southern train. I mean, it was just everything about it was like slower and they like, you know, no communication and dirty and people didn't really Love care. It. And then I took like a, a spur over to Raleigh and then got on a different line. And the, the other line was all East Coast. So it was different. People talk faster, move faster. They communicated with each other. And then by the time you got to New York, everybody knew the deal because they ride trains all the time. So then everybody was quick, quick, quick. But even still, Amtrak makes it a total mystery. So you don't know what track you're boarding. The train's boarding now. Nobody knows where, <laughs> you know, and you know it will leave without you. Nobody cares. So it's just, it was a fascinating experience. But I loved it. I loved it. it that is good. exactly why we lost the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know technology, Dude. man. Dude, oh, 100%. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. And then the poor people that were like, so the, the train arrives in Birmingham and it's heading north, right? Mm -hmm. Which means it started that morning in New Orleans. So everybody's getting off all hungover and bleary-eyed because they'd been partying in New Orleans all weekend. And, you know, half of them are just, it's the deep south, you know, so lots of people are just not in shape. Like, <laughs> you know, they're not, yeah. the five straight up steps that you have to navigate to get off the train, they weren't able to do it. Like people with huge heavy bags and knees that didn't exactly bend, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then like that one swollen diabetic foot that's not in a shoe yes. anymore and they're yes. just kind of limping. And the conductors are like, hey, we are not in the customer service business. So you got yourself up there, you got to get down. And it's like nobody helping them. And, like, seriously, the lady fell right in front of me, twisted her knee, like, kind of back behind her, and she was screaming in pain, and the conductor rolled her eyes, like, happens every day. You know, it's just oh, like, <laughs> what is, what is happening up. right now? Yeah. And it was, like, the ego death. Like, so the first 24 hours on the train, all of my sense of, like, self-pride and ego was just dying. It was just being flayed. And then we, you know, I finally get off that train and then I had become accustomed to like living in coach mm -hmm. and following the rules and being yelled at. And life was good after that. It was good. <laughs> you were institutionalized on the uh, 100, Yeah, 100%. That's, That's right. That's I, was, crazy. I was Morgan Freeman by the time we got off that train. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, get busy living or get busy Dan dying. Was here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Carved in the back of the I seat, wasn't sure dude. I was going to survive on the outside. That's right. That's right. Oh my gosh, man. But I mean, traveling, not just like across the country, but international. You were telling me once that you were in a place that had like, it's like in somewhere in where Europe borders Asia, but it's like a bunch of white redheaded Muslims. What? Hmm. All right. So wait, I'm thinking about this. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I misremember this conversation. There's a very white good White redheaded Muslims, you had me. Same here. Was I telling you the story? I'm trying to think of where that would have been. This is when I interviewed you. Uh, we're, oh, we were talking about uh, we were talking about Macedonia. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So Macedonia is in the Balkans, but it was the furthest. Um, it was the furthest east that the Ottoman Empire had come into Europe. Aside from the fact that they were at the gates of Vienna for you know famous uh, pushing the tide of the of the um, you know the the invasion of Europe back, right? Mm -hmm. So the gates of Vienna, there was a kind of a big thing. But anyway, so... <laughs> Dom, just pretend like you know what he's talking about. <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying. I'll get it. Though. I heard him go, mm -hmm. yeah, the invasion of Europe. You know, yeah, the I remember that. The important right thing, on. Dom, is that uh, you're here now and we're brothers, so it's okay now. It's okay, you know? They came from Germany. Dude. You win some, you lose some. That's what I... That's what's, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, yeah, so in Macedonia... Uh, or the country is called North Macedonia now. Um, and it's like north of Greece, but it's in the Balkans and it's tucked away in this corner kind of near Albania and Croatia and, um, you know, uh, Bosnia. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, that whole area. The powder keg, dude. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the middle of all that area. And yeah. And it, so it's, it is uh, historically, um, ethnically Albanian culturally and you know religiously muslim in the one corner of it but the whole country is sort of both mm. right so it, yeah it's a really interesting it's a really interesting mix and there was a there was a mosque there in the middle of the city from like the 1300s um oh, wow. you know right across the street from a you know like a kids bookstore that was you know <laughs> selling harry potter books you know it's it yeah. kind of just an interesting 
Interesting thing. I went to a church called Macedonia. Okay. I think they were Jehovah's Witnesses. Were they? I don't know. That sounds Greek Orthodox. <laughs> well, it was black people. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. I, I don't know, okay. I don't know what they were, but they weren't regular church. <laughs> right. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't regular, regular like church. Baptists or something yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? Regular people. It was something. <laughs> regular people? No, I'm just fucking like around. We can't do this on Dan. Oh, my God. I'm kidding. I assume this is the segment we're cutting. Is that right? <laughs> is that the God fearing Christian? On that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I respect Damn. everybody's tradition. That's that's interesting. But I mean, and you know, like the Apostle Paul was moving around all over there. So from like Thessalonica, that was that's in Turkey now, to like that whole area of Macedonia, he was moving around preaching. And when you go to um, the capital city of Skopje, they've got a huge golden statue of Alexander the Great on a horse, which is kind of their thumb mm. in the eye of Greece. Because they're like, yeah, Alexander the Great's our guy. And it, so they had this whole battle with Greece. And that's why they have to be called North Macedonia, because Greece was blocking them in the UN, calling themselves Macedonia. It's a whole, it's a fascinating region of the world. All former Yugoslavia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Wild stuff, man. Yeah. Cultural conflicts. Yeah. And those seem a lot deeper than the ones that run here, you know. Fascinating. Oh, Everybody yeah. in that city smoked. Everybody. Like, just Hell hardcore. Yeah. And it was Children? It was Ooh. winter. It was like January, February. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kids smoked. <laughs> old people smoked. They look. It was like National Geographic. I, I mean, it was it, like dude. just hardcore. Like, you know, everything was covered in snow. Huh. People sitting around. And, it, like, the Communist Party headquarters was across the street from the hotel that I was staying in. <laughs> And this was like, this had been like the circle, the traffic circle there had a, a statue of Tito who had been like the communist leader of Yugoslavia during the day. So these guys were like hardcore, you know, commies. Like, wow. you Has know. nothing to do with the vodka, by the way, Dom. So what were they smoking? <laughs> oh, just like it's Turkish, Turkish, Turkish tobacco, tobacco cigarettes. Tobacco? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, cigarettes. But like inside everywhere, every restaurant, wow. every bar, inside mm-hmm. the taxi cabs, inside the hotel. Yeah. My mom's from Germany, and she said she she stopped smoking at twelve. She mm. started when she was eight. <laughs> right, wow. swear to God. Oh, same, same. She same. Stopped smoking at twelve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the Germans have a lot of influence there, mm. like a lot of influence. That like a lot of the guys who were there spoke German. That was kind of the European language to speak if you wanted job opportunity out of there. Mm. Mm. Look, you learn something new every day here, all the yeah. time. I know, I sure do. Yeah, that's why people tuned into the comedy podcast <laughs> to, <laughs> to learn about, about the Macedonians. Dan's very loose grasp on geopolitical history. <laughs> Hell no. Everybody who likes comedy likes that shit. Yeah, we should caveat this by saying, like, I know nothing about what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> I go to play. I, I am. It's never stopped me from talking about it, but I literally have no idea what I'm talking about. If you're on this show, it's assumed that nobody knows. Oh, good. What they're saying. That's good. Uh, all We're right. just making noise. So you went to a. Uh, uh, <laughs> we found this. You went to a mic. Dressed up as Wilson, from, <laughs> from I did from um, Castaway. Yeah, yeah, and then the mic was canceled. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I dude. did, and so I, I there, so it was right around Halloween last year, mm-hmm. and uh, I went to this mic. It was the mic was at OTBX back then. We had a mic there, and I thought everybody was going to be dressed up. It was like the night before Halloween or something, and I came out. And I had my face was like painted like a like a uh, like a volleyball with the handprint on it, and I had like grass sticking up out of the top in a headband. <laughs> the headband said Wilson on it, and I had written a whole like six minute bit oh my God. as Wilson talking about this really bad breakup I had with this guy that I had this romantic relationship with in the islands, and you know, like it was so amazing. We lived right by the beach in the air, and it was so amazing. And then one day he left, and we he wanted to go sailing, and we got across the waves, and then and then I fell off the boat, and he wouldn't come save me, and I was calling out for him, and he just, he cried, but he sailed off somewhere else, and I've never seen him oh again. My anyway, it was, uh, yeah, I don't, I haven't read that bit in a while, but I was so excited to do that, and then it was just canceled. So I'm just standing on the street in the middle of like downtown Huntsville, <laughs> dressed like a volleyball, <laughs> with no place to go. So oh, I went and did my ew, bit for funny. the lady at the uh, drive-through line at Taco Bell and made myself feel better. 
Can you do it again, oh, yeah. like one of these days? Dress up? <laughs> I would like to see that. Yeah, the problem is like when you see the picture, it's a little dicey. Like the mm-hmm. you have to know that that's a red handprint because. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I didn't even if think the lighting's that. not yeah. right on that one, that that sure kind of that could end you. That looked a little problematic. It'll be inserted. They, they all, they all, yeah. <laughs> they'll all be able to see it. So I promise you, my whole head was white. I had the grass sticking up out of the top. Uh, it was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, well, I'll do it someday. I'll Thank do it. You. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be good. That mm-hmm. was er- that was early days in my uh, comedy career. How long you been doing stand up? A uh, little over a year. I- I'm in my second year. Oh, see, God. that's the- that's fucking batshit wow. crazy. Yeah, you want to come see a polished fucking comedian that got the fucking jokes? And mm. uh, yeah, I thought I even I know you told me before, but I could have sworn it was over. I thought you said like three years. Well, I wow. lied to you just because I wanted to get on the podcast earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so, mission accomplished. Wow. Jokes on you. I <laughs> know, you know. So, I like that's me doing stand up. So, I, I've obviously done. I did theater. I had a job at like the Jungle Cruise for a while when I was uh, between high school and college, and that was like stand up all the time, right? And and by the way, best job I ever had to this day. Best, absolute best job I've ever had. So. Um, I've always loved it, mm-hmm. but my life just took a turn for a while and I was focused on other stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. So I've always, and I was looking back through some stuff. I've been writing jokes kind of constantly, like in the margins and, and that kind of stuff for a while. But, um, see like you're, uh, yeah, I just started doing it. This is an example. Okay. It doesn't matter what age you are. Mm-hmm. You could be 21, 20, 45, 36. Uh, how do you, uh, yeah. 46. Mm, okay, yeah. I, 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 I took a year off. All right. uh, he, well, yeah, because in my nice on stage, I say forty five because I, I there's one point where I'm talking about I'm halfway to ninety, and I I don't want to get into the numbers, you know. So I, <laughs> we may as well just leave it at forty five for a while. I'll be Jack Benny until I'm fifty. Well, yeah, man, and you came in, you're smacking. You just did your mm-hmm. first first uh, pay gig at Stand Up Live. Is that your first one, or is, maybe I'm wrong about that? Yeah, first book show at Stand Up Live. First book show at Stand yeah, Up Live. It's a big deal. That's Real a close. Huge yeah, though, no, deal. it was exciting. It was very exciting. Oh, hey, thank hey, you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. right. That's good. That's more We're applause than I got at Stand Up Live. That's good. <laughs> Hell no, no, no. no. <laughs> You did real yeah. good. It was it was, uh, it was a joy to see. <laughs> and I would like to say this: I texted Dan. I said, "Hey man, how was how did Stand Up Live go?" I received ten paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I loved yeah. it. I loved it. But I hope you know you go so above and beyond more so than if I would have texted Dom, it would have been not even a sentence. Yeah, it would have yeah. been like a phrase, been like, yeah. "It was I, good. I yeah. was drunk. It sucked." Like something like that. <laughs> yeah, my my first draft of anything is the wordiest version of anything you could ever see. I like lengthy thought, you know, stuff, and it goes on for way too long. So that's what I'm. That's my brand. No, no you that's dropped brand. wisdom. <laughs> that's on my me. brand. Yeah. Way too drop long. drop awesome. some gems. He, he was telling does. me about this experience he had with an older Native American man on a trail somewhere. Oh wow! <laughs> I, I, I was I was it mesmerized. All, it, all, it all ties together. Yeah, <laughs> it did. Yeah. Well, the and the point of it is that there's no one show. There's no one moment where you ever arrive. Right. We're just on the journey. We're just on the process. Uh, yeah, but so you, you got just, your milestones that you you know you set for yeah. yourself. Like everybody, you got to set yeah. your milestones, and you just hit one. I'm had to have right. Yeah, no, that was that's a it huge, was one. exciting. It was yeah. really exciting. It's a big and, scenic view. That's yeah, and awesome, it was, man. and it's definitely something that I'm really um, thankful for here in Huntsville. That there's a scene that now there's kind of a path where guys like Scott Eason and the, the folks at Stand Up Live are creating a space for local comics to get on stage. Right. There's a sort of a I don't know if it's a pipeline, but there's at least a process to get on stage at the open mics mm-hmm. and then get on stage uh, for the, the local showcases and to, you know, really kind of see that room in, di- in from different perspectives. It was great. It was a, it was huge. Yeah. That and the green us. room. Dude, oh, I, yeah, I just does. geeked out about the green room. Yeah. Mm. I, was I, like, was <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering. Don't, don't tell too much about it. <laughs> I took a, re- <laughs> I took a I red. I wanted it to be a surprise. Yeah. Let me just say, there's sugar-free Red Bull in the fridge. <gasps> I know. Out of here. Free? Yeah. Well, I didn't know where to put any dollars, so I, it was free. <laughs> oh, I think it was free. Oh, <laughs> damn, oh, that's, big that's, how, that's big time. That's big time. Yeah. No, it's a, it was a good green room. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and signed on the wall with all kinds of cool people that have been through there. Yeah, it was it was good. It was meaningful. Wow. Hell yeah. It's yeah. awesome, man. And seeing you in man. the audience was fantastic. <laughs> Hell yeah. I had to come see it, man. I heard it was your guys' first time, and uh, I was yeah. like, oh man, I'm there, and it was fucking amazing. Like the whole night. I stayed. I stayed for Scott, 
uh, and then all of the the showcase. I didn't stay for the headliner because I had to get back. Okay, to yeah, yeah. But y'all, you guys did great, man. It was fun. This was a pretty fun room too. It was a fun. It was a fun room. Smaller crowd mm-hmm. that night. Yeah, uh, but man, and and it's always amazing how you really can't see into the darkness, but when you do see somebody, you know you see them. And I, like I told you, I was so glad to see your five head shining in, <laughs> in the lights out there, man. It was amazing. I was like, all right, yeah. I can at least, there's one guy I can play to. That was good. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Speaking of, uh, uh, did you know Southwest is giving um, more room to plus size passengers? So I, did pretty, not, I did not know that. Are you excited about it? I, I, these are the things I don't want to know about, <laughs> frankly. Why would you say I mean, that to him, dog? I have, <laughs> he's talking yeah. about five heads. I just want to know if he's good. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, dude, I don't ever want to need to know that, but I'm sure it will probably come in handy oh, at some point. Oh, damn right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, you, I bet they give you a hard time about getting on the plane. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? But I have never got searched. Oh, randomly really? selected? Not Never one time. Randomly selected. Right. Yeah. They're like, he's sweating, but we know why. They just come on through. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. No, this is day two. This is the second episode. I'm getting verbally abused here. No, not at all, man. I'm sitting here sweating on your podcast. So, hey, I'm sweating right right my body. ass off, too. Bra- I mean, Brandon's sitting right over there, yep. dude. King Sweat. This the guy. I turned the, turn the AC on a 66. <laughs> It's comfortable. You guys ain't comfortable? No, but, yeah, it's, it's I'm fine. I'm comfy. It's fine. I'm as comfortable as I ever am. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know. Oh, shit. What you got, JJ? Yeah, so you got a whole list. You got some backstory yeah, here. I, no, yeah, we, I, got, we got a lot. We still, your we deep, even dipped into your deep research scares me, so we may as well just pull it out. What do you got? No, uh, like steel that. throwing stars and nunchucks. I'm not exactly sure where that one oh, is yeah, headed. Yeah. What, what, what about that? Oh well, that was written my, down. Sometimes oh, our yeah. intel guy just puts stuff on there, and we just have to figure out what the fuck. Is <laughs> well, dude, all right. So if you grew up in the eighties, man, you were into ninjas. I, I don't care. Like if you were, if you liked, you know, action sports, you were into ninjas. It was a huge thing in the eighties, and the uh, Ninja Turtles was my my jam. And uh, like I found a couple of throwing stars at a garage sale, and I always had my own money because I had a job since I was ten. And I yeah bought those throwing stars, but the thing is, when you buy the throwing stars, they're never sharp. <laughs> so that was a problem. But we had like a vice grip and you know all the stuff in the garage that we needed. So I filed that stuff down, and they were sharp. My stuff wow. was ready to go. I, you never know when you were going to need the throwing stars, but I had it, <laughs> I and I was good, man. I could like flip, flip, yeah, you know, put them into a tree, do whatever had to happen. Can you can you do nunchucks right now? If, uh, if somebody gave you a set. I could probably fake the funk a little bit. Yeah, but, but I'd be able to, also, I can't do the, even the hit thing. You may as well mm. just, you know, open up uh, Epic Fails submission portal because <laughs> that's where that video is probably going to end up going. But yeah. I just, no, I had legitimate wood nunchucks with wow. the swivel and the chain. This was the kind of thing, if you were 13 and you had wood nunchucks, you were, you know, nobody was going to mess with you. Mm-hmm. And nobody was going to take that away at school either. True. Like, that wasn't... <laughs> so I finished high school pre-Columbine. So nobody had an issue with people that had weapons at school. It was just like, you shouldn't, right? But I remember mm-hmm. a guy in school had a, a rifle at school. Wow. And they just made him go put it in his truck and, like, leave it in your truck for the rest of the day. Because they knew he had it because he'd gone hunting and he didn't want to leave it in the truck because he didn't want to get broken in. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my dad told me a story where he had to do a speech, (laughs) and it was like a speech in his public speaking class, and he did how to clean a rifle, Yeah, and he just walked into school with it. Nobody said a word. That's right. And that just blows my mind. Well, back in the day, you didn't have to worry about people for the most, I mean- it was it mass was, mass shooting in schools. That's just, just one thing. thing. I mean, it happened occasionally. You'd hear somebody at, like with a beef coming to school because he wanted to settle the beef. Yeah. Right, and every now and then you'd hear that, but it wasn't. It wasn't. But that was like a hit, almost. You know, like it was like they're coming to kill that one person. People might get shot and uh, being around them. Yeah, yeah. But this is like people just going in there, and be like, oh, I want to kill innocent people today. It blows yeah. my mind. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. No, I mean, we definitely had we definitely had explosives and firearms and part of science explosives. projects explosives. all the time. <laughs> he said explosives. What kind oh, of yeah, thing about explosives? Now. Yeah, like no, I did a I did a science project on like what makes an explosion work and talk about like the expanding gases and all that kind of stuff. And I had like a mm-hmm. little video of me, like, you know, setting off fireworks and blowing things up. 
Damn. You know, like if you drop a firework in water, how it explodes yeah. differently than if you just throw it on the ground or put it in a can or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like you definitely had like an anarchist cookbook. I did. I, yeah, I remember downloading that in <laughs> college when I found out about it. And I was like just sitting in the, like the engineering lab or the computer lab at college because we didn't all have our own computers in our rooms yet. Like mm-hmm. this is the big transition. Wow. But I remember like, oh, this is a thing. And I found it on the Internet and I printed it at the printer in the computer lab in college and had that thing for a while. I'm, it's probably still in a box somewhere in my house. <laughs> but it was wow. like the the, the uh, diagrams and the graphics in that thing were garbage, so I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> wow. So we have this here sitting here on the table, but aren't you uh, endorsed by Captain Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that endorsement has run out. That endorsement has run out. <laughs> Tell us about tell us about the captain. Dude, Morgan, the though. captain. The captain got me through college. So I um, I signed up for a, a modeling and talent agency in college because I've I, like I said I've I've had a job since I was ten. I'll always need a little extra money. Money was tight in my family, so I signed up for a, a modeling and talent agency. But obviously you've seen my face, so that nobody called for a while, and uh, eventually I got a phone call one night. It was on like a Friday night. And they were like, hey, um, we've got a job tomorrow, but some people dropped out. We're really in a bind. Could you be there tomorrow at 9 a.m. on a Saturday? And I was like, dude, I'm there. And they were like, it's like $12 an hour, which back then the minimum wage was $4.25. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, I'm in. So I went and did like a full day's work for $12 an hour doing like, I forget what it was. It was something very minor, like handing out um, uh, free samples of gum that like Mm. promotions companies would come to. So then I moved up on their list. And what ended up happening was I was the guy who would always pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. So it didn't, after a while, it didn't matter how I looked. I became like. <laughs> All reliable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I just became the kind of the weird looking guy who was easy to work with and always showed up. Oh. And I just did what I said I was going to do. I was never a problem for anybody. And then Seagram's came out and they were doing like a multi-week promotion in New Orleans to um, right around the launch of their, whatever their version of Malibu rum was. So it was like called, I I don't know, it was like coconut, it was was Captain Morgan's coconut. Parrot Bay. Parrot Bay. Bay, That's it, Parrot Bay. Mm -hmm. I still have a bunch of Parrot Bay uh, tchotchkes and stuff in in my uh, memory box. Yeah, so so I showed up and they were like, how tall are you? And they're like, perfect. And so I was Captain Morgan at like all these bars around New Orleans, (laughs) all these bars around the French Quarter, like going, like going to people with. If you've ever been in a bar where somebody's handing out free shots, uh-huh. that's what I was doing. Yeah, it was fantastic. Dressed to the gills, though. Eh? Dressed to the gills, yep. paid fifteen bucks an hour. <laughs> Ama- amazing. Wow. Just escorted around, and then I had like pirate girls that came with me. It was it was oh, the damn, most incredible. Okay. Hey, you a big ball. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got tips in the gay bars. That was the most oh, amazing. Hell yeah. Oh. hell yeah. Yeah. I made money that. That makes you feel dances twirling. With <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He takes the feather off his hat and like tickles him with it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, whatever it takes. I mean, oh, I hear you. I mean, I hear you. It was Same great. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And so the lesson is be easy to work with. Do what you say you're going to do. If you if you take a job, show up at the job and just be the, the person everybody wants to hang out with and you get the work. There were always people better looking than me, more talented than me, whatever. Just be the guy that is easy to work with. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what I that's what I took away. And be yeah. available. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Championship teams need role players, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's right. Essential. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. So I'm like Gronk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gronk was a Mike Tyson. Guy. Man, I'm, like, I'm more like a tight end. Like you don't think about me until <laughs> a the, blocking tight end. Yeah, yeah, I'm a blocking tight end. That's, <laughs> it. That's exactly what I am. What, what'd you say? Oh, I feel like Mike Tyson. I mean, he's. <laughs> you, went, you went a little. You went a little different way. Yeah. Oh, I thought and we were talking about athletics. It doesn't pertain. It's not a team sport. It's not a team sport. <laughs> oh yeah. well, then. I and guess he's Michael also Jordan. maybe the world's greatest <laughs> <Don't> fighter <laughs> that ever lived. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's also that. I'm yeah. not in Mike Tyson <laughs> territory. I'm more in like. It's a great compliment. I'm more yeah. like. I'm more like Riddick Bo on the Olympic team. That's. <laughs> That's, that's, where I'm, there's, that's where I'm at. Hell yeah. Well, first of all, you've only been doing it. I can't. I still can't believe you've only been doing it for two years. Like When you guys go out and see them, I mean, you're going to see. Refined. You're going to see refined. Perfect. Good shit. Like a single malt whiskey. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. And if you're, if you're a stand-up. He's been through the charcoal. <laughs> yeah. He just learned that out loud. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. That was the pregame lecture. Yeah. <laughs> I have to teach people stuff so I remember it. <laughs> I come prepared with all kinds of stuff that has nothing to do with comedy whatsoever. I just... 
talk about scotch. That's, no, that's I, I, well, first of all, I appreciate that, and uh, it, it's true that I really have no idea what I'm doing. Hmm. So I, I just, I'm very aware of how little I know. And but I does just, anybody? True, no. right? I just put my head into it. Right. In this game, does anybody? There's no, there's oh. no formula. No. I don't know. There's some, pe- there's some people here that really have a knack for how comedy works. What's funny? They have an intrinsic, instinctive. I think Nico's one of those guys. Jalen Brown. Jalen, mm-hmm. sci-fi. Those, those so guys really, yeah. it feels effortless when they're up there. Yep. They're just playing with the audience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah N- I, Nico I, And they're sure. doing material, oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, true. I learn they're a lot. I, I, I take a lot of notes just watching other people do their stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so that's why you got any advice for that? Because, you know, this is clown college. <laughs> so what would be I your... Have advice. This is a learning piece, institution. Well, Dan's good at advice, first of all. But uh, you got one piece of advice you want to give, like somebody who's an open micer or uh, who's maybe thinking about coming out and how oh to get yeah, better out. yeah. Don't wait. That's mm-hmm. the, I mm-hmm. mean, if you take one lesson away from me, don't wait. And Jack, I talk to you about this forever. There's no reason to wait. It's not going to be perfect. Yeah. It can't be perfect, mm-hmm. right? So you may as well just get out there and start getting better, and don't let perfect get in the way of just doing it. I think that's that's the thing. And I, I probably waited far longer than I should have. You know, I was focused on other stuff in my life. So there were yeah. some times where I think maybe I should have started 10 years earlier. I don't know if my personal life would have survived me starting this 10 years earlier. I, there were some things I had to do to kind of get my own shit together before yeah. I could really move out in that way. But if it's something you want to do, don't do, – I mean, there's literally no reason – uh, that should prevent you from getting on stage the next available mic. Hmm. You know, write a little bit and get up and test it. Mm-hmm. That's what you got to do. When everybody goes home at night, they're not going to remember your set. No. They're not going to think about you at all. And if you right. go up, if like, uh, like if people go up before me, because I don't have the notebook, I need to start bringing a notebook out so I can write yeah. stuff. Because cause like I'll laugh at someone, I'll be like, I'm going to tell them about that yeah. at the end. But if, if you go up before me, I'm thinking about my set. You know what I'm saying? I have to I have to get my set down because you know I don't read on. I'm not going to read my notes on stage. Same. Even when I have them up there, I'm not reading. I just you know, that as a, uh, so I have to practice my set in my head to uh, to get it through. But if I had a notebook, because I'm still watching, but if I had a notebook, I can just write down like, oh, Dan said this, mm. and get and give back more feedback. Yeah, and sometimes somebody will talk about something that reminds you of something totally else in your life mm-hmm. that could be a premise for the next joke. So. I'm always jotting ideas down. Sometimes it's about mm. the things you're talking about. Sometimes it's like, oh, that's funny. That reminds me of this other story I need to find a way to tell. That's good. Right? So, yeah, there's that. I think um, one of the things is try to uh, try to make it as professional as you can as early as you can. And so professional being, try to get off book when you get up. If you've got five minutes, you should practice enough before you get there to try to get off book. Unless it's stuff you wrote that day. I mean, there, obviously, it's an open mic. You have the ability to you know, read from your notes and kind of remind yourself. But Mm -hmm. the process of getting off book is a professional step forward. You have to be off book if you're going to do five minutes as an opening set on on a show. And so getting off book, it's a stressor that you add to yourself, but it's a good one because it forces that memorization process. It forces the rehearsal process, which is only going to make your delivery better. Um, And it forces you to be kind of more in the moment without that lifeline of a you know, a set list waiting over there on the stool. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, but that is, um, I don't judge anybody that's looking at a set list, but I think for me, that's been a tip, uh, that I got from a comedy class that I took. That was something that I've kind of taken to heart, like really try to be off book when you're on stage. I like that. That one has kind of forced my hand, forced me forward a little faster, maybe. Okay. And it, and it gives you time. Like, um, do you think it gives you better, it helps you perform better because you know it's a performance too. You're telling jokes, yeah, but it's a yeah. performance. Do you think that helps you perform better? I think so, right? Because you're not thinking about the stool. Mm-hmm. You're not thinking about whether the set list is on your phone or it's on a card or, or however you do your set list. Um, it's it's not there for you to lean back and, and look. So you have no choice but to look at people and, and finish your joke in somebody's eyes and finish your point over here. And I'm going to do a setup for you. And I'm going to do the punchline to you. And if that, I think just that patter changes your delivery and your performance quicker. I, I, I mean, I, that's just what I've seen for mm-hmm. me. For me. Watch Again, us. asterisk. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, right. This guy's good. Trust me. Just go see him. Yeah. 
see him everywhere. You you do you do uh, you're producer on Homegrown. Co-producer. Co-producer on Homegrown. Yep. That's what Jonathan Silver said I am, so mm-hmm. I'm taking it. Hell yeah. <laughs> he, he said that so I wouldn't leave. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so this is a really cool thing that Jonathan Silver did. So uh, the Homegrown Comedy Show has been in Huntsville for 11 years plus now. Um, it's the second longest running show here in Huntsville. 11 years is a long time for a show yeah. to, to go on. It's a monthly show. Lots of different producers. Matthew Tate was a, a longtime producer. Uh, Roy Hairston was a producer. Okay. I don't know who was before those guys because I, I haven't been engaged that long. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Jonathan inherited it. He called me one day. I was in, I was in uh, Maryland on on a business trip, in a Staples parking lot, waiting for a proposal to finish printing, because that's the the dark side of my life is just the uh, mindlessness of my of my job. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, you know, I'm helping somebody no matter what I do. Anyway, so I'm sitting in a Staples parking lot and Jonathan calls me and uh, he's like, hey, what, what do you think about a residency? Which is kind of a funny idea, right? You know, like there's always the Vegas residency. Yeah. And he's like, would you be in our, and of course this is Jonathan, consummate salesman, selling me on the idea of uh, being part of the monthly lineup every month for Homegrown. He's like, what do you think about doing a residency where every month you're on Homegrown? I, w- I was like, I'm, I'm in. And I told him I was like, okay, so my my starting uh, you know pay is a thousand dollars a set, mm-hmm. uh, but we can negotiate from there. <laughs> Industry <laughs> standard. And he was like, I was thinking about like nothing guaranteed but tips. What do you think about that? I was like, I'm in. We'll, let's we'll do that. Um, and that's been fantastic. So that's every month, the second Friday of every month, in the same place. Um, the speakeasy at Straight to Ale. You've been on it. You've been on it. It's. I think this has. Um, real potential to, you know, obviously keep going Mm -hmm. and to build uh, kind of a following of people that know that we're there and, and come out on a, on a repeat basis. So I'm excited to be a part of it and thankful to, you know, to have that. And it's forced me because I've had some weeks were really good and I've had some sets that I was not excited about how they went, uh, made some mistakes and then have to come back the next month and be like, okay, it's now or never. We're either going to fix this. We're going to live with the shame of last time. Um, as a tattoo, and it's uh, it's been a good process of learning how to get back on the horse and uh, jump back in there. Oh yeah, for sure. the oh, yeah. the last The last homegrown taught me that mm. going up there when you hosting bomb, pretty much bombing the host set, and then having to get back up every time to bring up somebody new. I mean, it really makes you think like. Do I want to do this? You have to want to do it to yeah. be able to bring yourself back up you props, there. Dude. You did good too, did he? Whenever, because uh, you, you know, the first, the set didn't go good, but you got him back with the joke about me, and then at the end uh, about don't beat your wife or whatever. No, uh, just, uh, go go buy a drink, cheat on your wife. I yeah, don't care. cheat on your wife. I don't care. You got yeah. yeah. But I mean that that even though it wasn't necessarily a great set that mm-hmm. I did. I value that just as much as I would if I like killed the show, just because it teaches you something. You You know, I, Dan, me and you, we talked about this on a different homegrown show. Like, you feel yourself going up there and like growing as a comedian in (laughs) real time because you're like, oh shit, like growing like a starfish. Like you just had your arm chopped off, and it's you know it's gonna grow back because you're a starfish. But ow, it hurts right now because the shark got me. And everybody knows, dude. (laughs) Everybody knows. Oh man, there's no worse feeling. public shame but you know it's being able to bounce back from that really makes you think do i want to do this and forcing yourself to go back up there and continuing to do it i mean that's what the process is hell yeah well and that i tell you that i mean i think that's the quiet genius of having kind of the same crew on the same show month after month is that it you you're not just doing it for you you've got other people relying on you, you have no choice but next month i gotta get back up and i gotta do better yeah mm-hmm because I don't want to turn over an audience that's not hot to the next guy. So I got people depending on me to do better next time. I can't walk away. I can't take my ball and go home. I can't cry in the corner for too long. I need to rewrite my shit and do it better next time. Right. Dude, I just now remember that you said that. I forgot I went up to Dan before the show that we that we both bombed on. I was like, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, don't worry about it. I got my my end jokes gonna get them right for you. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, I said that. <laughs> yeah, you you also said I might run over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. And, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. shit. That's when I hear my mom in my head. My mom was a great for like quoting scripture at me, and like in a way that was like helpful, but also not what I needed. I could have used a hug, mom. You know, but she would sit back and she was like, in this case, she would say. 
Well, the Bible says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And I would just be like, thanks. I really don't need to hear that now. I mean, I've already fallen. I just, <laughs> I lived it. <laughs> yeah. I'm very badly burned. My legs are broken. So. All right, Dan, that's the end of the podcast. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do right now. Well, first of all, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank of course. You. Thanks for yeah, having conversation. me. And also, was this good? Yeah, this is oh, perfect. Great. Are we talking about anything worthwhile? Oh, no, 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 no. no. This, what this, happened? This is great. <laughs> this is every, See, these I, are the episodes we I blacked cherish. out. These I are, blacked out <laughs> completely. <laughs> black label. Yeah, huh? Black label. We'll black make you black out. But what do you say? Black person. I said black person. You said black label. <laughs> I like black person. I see what you did there, Bernie. Quick. That's not. That's not even how I see you. Now that you mention it, I realize. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice before. I know, man. It's hard sometimes. <laughs> Good shit, man. Over the phone, I wouldn't know. Oh, yeah, over the phone? Yeah, no. Yeah. On the radio, they don't know. <laughs> oh, no. They think I'm probably Bobby Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's reverse. Nobody right? thinks you're fucking Bobby Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Dan. <laughs> you're welcome. Anytime. But these are the, these are the episodes I cherish because, uh, like Jalen's, this is going to help. People, because this is what this show is about. People who like are just interested about inner workings, or that want to come out and do it. And I think you you might push somebody to come out and do it. And Dude, well, I mean, out. if there's any last thing I could say, if you're thinking about coming out, come out. Mm -hmm. The Huntsville comedy scene right now is collaborative. It is open. It is welcoming. There's not a lot of um, dickheadery happening right yeah. now. There's not a lot of douchebaggery. It's really kind of an open scene. Just come out. Any of the shows, go to Shenanigans, uh, go to uh, the, yep. the Boxcar mic on Sundays. Hell yeah. Go to any of the shows that are happening, any of the, the Jonathan Silver mics or the mics that are happening at Mad Malts. Uh, it's Fat all Sammy's. Fat Sammy's. Fat Sammy's, yeah. Every it's Wednesday. all an open, welcoming set. And failure is not only tolerated, it is expected yeah. and encouraged because we all get another reason to laugh at you. <laughs> Sometimes we're just laughing at each other. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay too. That's okay too. All part of laughing. the process. It's all fun and games. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, now what you're gonna? Oh, first, oh, I, we almost didn't what say thank do? you again for that fucking beautiful. Uh, and we're getting oh, framed. Yeah. Pull that back. Up. Oh, yeah. And that is going to. Be that shit goes God. hard. I we're painting it. the whole wall. That's gonna be smack that in the that middle. That is so cool. <laughs> oh my god! Come on, that's just that show is so that cool. again. I got this side. That oh is my wild, god, man. God, dude. I gotta so watch well that movie now. <laughs> yeah, like, I gotta watch it today. <laughs> like the Weapon Three. <laughs> yeah, that's Joe Pesci in the middle, right? Oh, that's my favorite <laughs> character, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, actor. Damn, that's dude. my favorite actor. One of them. Joe Pesci. Yep. That is bad that's ass. So Y'all look great. Y'all look great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank and you. also, that's nice. In this camera right here, anything you have to promote, it'll be on the screen right next to you. Man, I don't think I've finally gotten to a place where there's really nothing else uh, on my docket for a minute. Um, so the Homegrown Comedy Show, second Friday of every month, we'll be back in uh, January. I'm going to be uh, doing a show for um, the Night Camp uh, Comedy Show on February 16th at, I think it's at Shenanigans. And uh, I'm available for booking anytime. And, uh, you know, hopefully some point I'll be opening for somebody at Stand Up Live. But hey. uh, more to follow. Just follow me. Social media at Dan Price, Inc. I-N-K. Uh, any social media platform except TikTok because I'm not legally allowed to put that on my phone yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll solve that later at some point. Uh, but anyway, that's it. And I, I've got a website, um, danprice.inc. So that's okay. it. And Thank Moonshine so Ping much. Pong. Oh, yeah. Thank and Right. And Moonshine Ping Pong, which is obviously for 2024, where we're going to be putting some effort and uh, hoping the uh, the collaborative effect of that with uh, Sierra Moses and Sci-Fi and uh, Carson and anybody else that we can get uh, engaged in that. Jalen. Uh, we're Ashlyn. looking for, yeah, absolutely. Ashlyn, Alex Z, mm -hmm. uh, anybody that wants to come along, we, it's an, it's an open clubhouse. We want everybody to be a part of it and uh, good ideas are, are welcome and the more the merrier. Hell yeah. Hell Might yeah. see us on one maybe. Yep. Time. Perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. All right, baby. Thank okay. you. Hey, man. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. All right. Hell.